mean, you kind of had like for me, you know, Josh Cohen, you know, my man from uh from the radio station ESPN yeah. West Palm. He had already talked about, hey, I already booked a room for us to go. We don't have to go to the event, but we have to be in Vegas that weekend because that's the perfect opportunity to get out there and just you have to be there. You so, have to be there, man. Yeah, Even yeah, if you're watching it, you have to be there. You have to feel the, the air and breathe in the moment because this is a once-in-a-lifetime moment with two guys that are that are kings in, in, in their combat sports, and they're going to meet. And they're going to meet at a time where both sports are popping. It's not like the six years later when, when yeah. Floyd Mayweather fought Pac-Man. This is something that's been talked about for under 12 months, and they produce. So yeah, we will yeah, be yeah. there. And um, be honest, me and Connor ain't really saw eye to eye on a lot of things. At the end of the day, I still want to scrap them. But I'm betting on Connor. You know why? Why? I bet a grand. I win uh, 6500 bucks. Bet two grand, 13 grand. This is freaking combat sports. Anybody got a chance at all times. So I'm willing to lose for the chance to win because that's crazy that somebody that is that big of an underdog. Like on paper, you and I can see how why. And mm-hmm. and I think it might it might go who knows? It might go I might be able to bet a hundred bucks to win a thousand. It might be plus one thousand at the end of the day once people really start putting their, their analytical hats on this fight and you know, the style matchup, but I don't know, man. I don't think he's going to win, but if he proved me wrong, I at least want to I know, yeah. cash in on it. I mean, honestly, you know, I'm I'm a, a Connor fan in the sense of, like, I love his mentality and his approach to, to his life as far as, like, you know, you could tell he studies and, you know, and he's got a, a belief in himself that is, like, that not a lot of people have. And, like, that's admirable. So yeah. part of me, yeah, part of me is like, man, you know what? If, if he does it, like, for him to believe in himself that much to want to fight Floyd Mayweather, you know, part of me is kind of like, man, I kind of want to see, you know what I'm saying? Like, if he believes in himself that much and really, you know, puts his his balls on the line and trains really hard and really believes that he can win, kind of, I mean, I don't think he's going to win, and I, but you kind of want to say, man, I, yeah, if he does it, man, good for him. Well, you think about it this way. We talk about this all the time, and this is one of the key points I bring up when we're talking about um, basically self-belief. Self-belief is one of the most dangerous weapons a fighter can have. When you go out there, you're not expected to win, and the odds are not uh, not in your favor, and you have nothing to lose. When you go out there and you say, hey, you know what? I don't give a F. I'm going to try to come and clean this dude head off his neck, off his thoke, and win this fight, that's a dangerous fighter to fight. That's That person's not going to be movable. You're not going to change their mind about it. They're going to go out there, and they're going to try to beat you, and they're going to be willing to die to do it. Conor McGregor, I'm not going to give him that kind of that kind of thug life status, but I'm just saying somebody that does have that is a very dangerous and very unpredictable, and it's going to be hard to convince that person that they're going to lose that night. Um, I think it's a great payday for him. I think he will come out there and give a great fight. Um, I mean, I don't know if he possessed that, you know, the mentality I'm talking about. But with that said, that sometimes, um, Dean, that trumps talent, that trumps experience, and that trumps, you know, um, the on paper style matchup that's very favorable for Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, well, that's my thing is it, like, like you said, when you have that self belief. So, this is, here's my thing, like, I've, you know, Tyra, you know, I've been, I've been dealing with fighters for 20 years and, you know, guys, sometimes guys just underperform because they don't have self-belief, so they don't really give their 100%. But when you're dealing with a guy who really, truly believes, he always digs a little deeper and gives more than 100%. Deep. And they're able to they're able to, to, to give more than what they're capable of. And I agree. So, I mean, with that, with that, with that being said, with that being said, I still find it hard for him to have a puncher's chance in this fight. Yeah, you, I, I agree with you. I want you. I want you 100%. And, um, you know, if you think about the style matchup, um, how does Connor get this fight done? Connor's only really got anybody out there with a straight left hand. He does a spinning wheel kick, which we obviously know is not going to be legal in a boxing match. Has he really ever landed it? Have he really ever damaged somebody with a back kick? He does some smoke and mirror things to get you off. He'll even do some pity pack combinations. But when you watch Connor McGregor hurt somebody, he slips his punch and he throws his crazy left hand. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or he leaves with a jab, he gets you covered up, and he throws his crazy left hand. His left hand is his tool. The yeah. best defensive boxer in the history of boxing 
You mean to tell me that Floyd Mayweather would not have an answer for one punch? Like that's what? Yeah, that's kidding. Me. Yeah, like the way I, I mean, everybody's saying you know he has a puncher's chance. They're going to get in there. They're going to fight. He has a puncher's chance. But we're talking about Floyd Mayweather, who, who is a defensive genius. I find it hard. I, I just can't believe that he's going to go out there and be in a position and la- allow Connor to get in a position to get that puncher's chance off. You know what I'm saying? I, I Floyd's not going to take chances like that. He's going to he's he's going to use his movement and footwork early to really make it hard for Connor to get his hands on him. And, and he's just trying to embarrass the, him. He's yeah. going to try to make him miss, miss a lot. He's going to make him doubt himself in there. And you know more than me. Just sparring with you. When, remember when I first started sparring with you? I was in the greatest shape on earth. But if you made me miss 10 punches and you made me pay and I wanted to get out of the round and I couldn't get out of the round, that exhausts you. It's called the mental anxiety where you feel like this person is better than me. I can't hit them. They're faster than me. They're just so much, um, you know, they're just so far ahead. I can't catch up. That's the type of anxiety that Floyd Mayweather produces. And that's the kind of anxiety he would do to a guy who's not a professional boxer, who has never competed against a top level boxer, who against an average guy on YouTube is getting picked apart by a guy that's nowhere the caliber of Cotto, Manny Pacquiao, Shane Mosley, Oscar De La Hoya, all these different guys, legendary that have been beaten by Floyd Mayweather. So I'm excited about the fight, but we do have to keep it real. Yeah, man, I just, I can't imagine Floyd going, all right, you know what? I'm going to stand here and let him get a get a couple oh punches on. No, I yeah. just, I, that's that's never going to happen, man. Like, I can't, like, I don't know what. what it's reactionary is, like, impossible. Yeah. He's a program. He's built yeah. his body to react. Whether Floyd Mayweather's want to or not, a punch is going to come. His body's going to move by itself. He's built those reactions with drilling, technique, over and over again, muscle memory, pad work, and just experience on being in there, watching somebody's hips, watching somebody's eyes, their chest opening up when they want to throw a big shot. He knows how to move. He knows how to switch stands. He can fight three or four different styles, man. He can lead with a check hook like he always do, catch people coming in. He can be really offensive. He can be really defensive. He can counter well, and he can make you miss, and he can make you pay. He's a right-hand roll, right-hand king, and I think we've seen it against some of the best guys. Canelo. Mm -hmm. Canelo? Like, Canelo right on the Floyd to me, man. He might be be that guy, and he made him look stupid. I know. Yeah, I just, man, I I mean, I I really, I can't wait to see it. I'm walking out with Floyd. I'm hitting him (laughs) up. Floyd Mayweather, if you listen to the Morning Wood Show with these nuts, guess what? Justin Bieber sat down somewhere. You didn't walk out with him a couple of times. You switch your hairstyle too much. We already know y'all cool. Guess what? I'm going to change the game of all the MMA fans, all the UFC fans, Dana White. Everybody going to be mad at me. But I'm walking out with Floyd. Now what? See that? See? You put it in, <laughs> spoke it into existence. Well, um, yeah, we were talking in the gym the other day, King Mo and Dia Davis. Um, and they were talking about they had heard that Floyd had been in the gym busting his sparring partners up already. Oh, believe Already. It. So I'm just like, so to me, I was like, you know what? It, to me, I think the timing actually is kind of bad for, for Connor. You okay. know, if I was Connor, I would want to try to drag this thing who out. Who's Connor going to gonna bring in? I know, like, who's he going to bring in to get prepared for in two months? Who to help get prepared in two months? Like, like name me the person. I want to see this person. I, bring him to me, because I'm going to tell you one thing. It's a kid named DeAndre Lattimore. They call him Bull Lattimore from St. Louis was a prospect and he was on the rise right and he got this opportunity to go spar with floyd mayweather the great floyd mayweather in las vegas move his training camp he moved himself there right you know what that person is the person's a damn punching bag that person's a sparring partner he went out there and Mm -hmm. especially you don't start getting a better of floyd in the round that round the rounds are what he wants them to be yeah they're three minute rounds but if you want to go seven if you want to go 10 if you want to go 12 you have to stay in there and go the rounds how he wants to go he can play he can talk it's whatever he wants to do and he man he'll hurt you not like not just with power just with you so fatigued you can't even hold your hands up you yeah. missed so many times you forgot the basic techniques and fundamentals that you learned by your coach and connor has never been the nail you know what I mean? Yeah. We seen the first time he faced adversity when he got hit with a little shot and got the, the rear naked choke put on him. He's never been the nail. He's always been the hammer. He's always fought guys that were um, lesser strikers than him. This is going to be a true test. Let's see if his, yeah. his actions and his mouth add up. 
I think he gets embarrassed, man. I think Floyd comes out and for a round or two, doesn't throw a lot of punches, just establishes his de- his defense to let Connor know that he can't touch him. And then I think once he starts touching uh, Connor, Connor starts lunging in with that left hand. I think he gets lit up like a Christmas. And you know tree. the funny part? It don't even matter. We don't care. We yeah, want to be entertained. Yeah, I don't, don't care, care what the undercard is. Man, give nope. me Connor and Floyd, and I will pay eighty dollars to watch one fight. I know. And I, I'm not the only one that's willing to do that. So we're break fans and listeners of the Morning Wood Show. We're breaking on a fight, just being real, because obviously you know my man Dean's MMA Scouting Report dot com. He will break you down to a molecule, and I'm on the Fox desk, so I have to do this for a living to make sure that I'm giving everybody an unbiased, you know, fine tooth comb. We're breaking it down from that. But the fact about watching the fight and people are going to visit the fight and buying a pay per view for the fight, you will do it. I will do it. Because it's a moment in time you can't just say, okay, I remember when. You either have to have seen it, have some record or knowledge of it, or have been there. Now, um, Tyra, I've read something today that you said that uh, Connor, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but you said Connor should box after this? No, what I said was, I hate, I hate the internet. Yeah. You people just don't even do no <laughs> research no more. Ain't nobody reading no newspaper. If something on the internet becomes a law, Wikipedia is a law. Like, people don't do no testing for themselves. So I appreciate you, Dean, for asking me directly. What I said was, I think that after Conor McGregor fights Floyd Mayweather, it depends on the result. If he fights Floyd Mayweather and he wins, I believe there either either is going to be a rematch where he's now, now I'm the 18. You get, you know, this amount of money. I get that amount of money. I think that'll happen. Or, you know, if, if he loses, I think he could potentially come back and fight in the MMA. But tell me what fight is going to entice him. What fight's going to be that magnitude after you came off fighting Floyd Mayweather? And he's not going to be hurting for money. So it's no. going to come down to a motivation thing. Is it Nick D Nick um not Nick Nate Diaz trilogy? Is that the next fight? You fought the dude twice. You went up and fought and won the belt. You went to go fight Floyd Mayweather. Now you're gonna come back and complete a trilogy? Like really? Like you're gonna no, fight no, no way a, a very dangerous opponent for yourself? You're gonna fight Tony Ferguson or uh, Habib? Where they you know they're not gonna partner with you on selling the fight? I mean, the only fight that I think makes sense is George St. Pierre, and we all know George St. Pierre. He playing everybody. I don't think he. I don't think a bone in his body want to fight. So, <laughs> ain't that my, the truth? <laughs> yeah, my gut says that he's gonna go out here in victory. He's gonna fucking maybe rematch, or he's gonna maybe maybe somebody else want to fight him. Maybe Errol Spencer, maybe freaking Canelo, maybe um, Amir Khan, maybe Adrian Broner. Somebody's gonna start barking again. And if they bark and they start going fifty million plus, what person in their right mind wouldn't take up on that? You know what I mean? 